up when you went to the Cypress Sanctuary of the Cedar Road Church, located right here in beautiful Murfreesboro, Road, Tennessee. Yes, Lord, we thank God for you. We thank you that you have chosen to join us on this day. And I speak of thankfulness. I'm thankful for our young people. Amen. Did they usher us into the presence of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. They told us about the overflow. And I believe somebody was running on empty this morning. Yes, Lord, your gas might have been on all week long. Hallelujah. But because of worship, and because of what happens when you worship, when the Spirit of the Lord is there yesterday, when you open up, God will come in. When you cast all your cares on Him, you're reminded that He cares for you. And even if you are on need this week, yes, Lord, you can overflow today. You can have enough not only for yourself, but for you, your family, for everybody that you come in contact with. Yes, Lord, your light can shine brighter than ever. And we're grateful to God. Thank God so much for our young people. Thank God for his presence in their lives. Thank God for all they're doing. Yes, Lord. My Bible tells me in Proverbs to train up a child in the way that it should go. And when it's old, it shall not depart. And I just thank God for all of those, the parents and grandparents and everybody that works so hard behind the scenes, so diligently, week after week, month after month. Yes, Lord, to continue to tune and teach and train to help our children be everything that God has called them to be. Speaking of thankfulness, amen, we thank God for all of you that have been continuing to support the ministry, amen. Ministry has been going forward, hallelujah. And if there was ever a time that we need ministry to go forward, hallelujah, the time is now in 2020. During this COVID-19 season, there are so many that are hurting. There are so many that need help, hallelujah. But do you understand that God is our very present help, even in the time of storm? Yes. Hallelujah. We're just grateful to God for you, each and every one of you that have continued uh, to sow your time, your talent, and your treasure into the kingdom during this season. Hallelujah. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we want to continue to, to encourage you to do that. Hallelujah. This is not the time to lighten up. This is not the time to, to slow down. This is not the time to uh, give up. Amen. If there was ever a time we needed the devourer to be rebuked, amen. The time is now. Uh, but God promised us in this word in Malachi chapter 3 that if we bring ye all the times into the storehouse, there shall be me in my house. And prove me here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I would not open up the windows of heaven, pour you out such a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I'm grateful to God for the truth of his word because of giving. Amen. Because you have been faithful. Hallelujah. I've done one house blessing this week and I got another one coming up. Amen. God has been true to his word. I've heard what the testimonies of those that have gotten jobs and, and better jobs. And it's just because of, of what God is doing. Because you have been faithful. Uh, you've been an essential worker all this time. But still, the hand of God has held back. He's held back the pandemic. He's held back the plague. He's held back anything that would devour you. So we're getting ready to lift our offering. Amen. Even if you're at home, yes, Lord, you know the instructions. You know what to do. You can use a church center app. Uh, there's a text to give that you can use to, to make sure that you can text your donation. Hallelujah. And then you can do it the old-fashioned way. Yes, Lord, you can do a slow mail. Yes, Lord, mail your times, your offering to uh, Sea Road Church located right here. Beautiful. 528 East Main Street. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. However you decide to give, amen. We just pray God's blessings upon you as you give, amen. Because the Bible tells me in Galatians that God loves a cheerful giver. So let us ask God's blessings upon your tithe and your offering today. Yes, Lord, go ahead and get them out. Yes, Lord, go ahead and prepare them. Yes, Lord. And we're going to ask God's blessings upon them. Let's pray, God. Precious Lord, we praise you. We thank you for the truth of your word. You decree and declare in your word that you will give bread to the ear and seed to the soul. Lord God, you promised in your word that you rebuke the devourer for our sins. You said in your word, if we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. So Lord, we pray right now that you bless the gift, bless the giver. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom in the earth. I'm going to say thank you now, because you're faithful. It's in the marvelous masters and mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Somebody loves and shout amen. Amen, amen. There is a word from heaven that I would love to share with you today. Uh, we're continuing in our Heal the Land series. Uh, we're doing part four, the Heal the Land series in this month of August. Hallelujah. Heal the Land series. Hallelujah. And I want to call your attention to uh, Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. We're going to lift up verses 39 through 43. Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. Hallelujah. And I'm sharing from the King James translation today. And when you have it, wake up that neighbor in your house, hallelujah, and just shout, I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 23, verse 39 through 43. Here begins the reading of the word. And one of the malefactors, 
which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other one answered, rebuking him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? For we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And I just want to lift up another uh, verse of scripture real quick. But amen. I want to just go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, which has been our focus and foundational for, verse for this particular series. Uh, the word of God says, If my people, yeah. which are called by my name, yeah. shall humble themselves and pray yeah. and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from them. Yes. Uh, I will forgive their sin yeah. and I will heal their land. Yeah. Amen. Uh, today, the Lord and I want to minister in the part for this series, uh, Heal the Land. Turning and hearing. We want to talk about the subject, turning and hearing. Amen. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, where the word of God gives uh, uh, some promises. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God gives promises. Amen. As a matter of fact, God gives a recipe for restoration for his people. Whenever his people are find themselves in predicaments, in plagues, when they're facing problems, pressures. Hallelujah. God gives a recipe uh, for restoration. Hallelujah. Jesus told them, excuse me, God said in his conversation, a crucial conversation to Solomon in the midst of his prayer in 2 Chronicles 17. Hallelujah. He told them that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. He gives a recipe for restoration. As a matter of fact, God gave a, a personal promise to Solomon in this prayer. Hallelujah. But believe it or not, that promise is not only personal for Solomon, but for each and every person that believes in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Every person of the body of believers. This, this promise is not only for, for Solomon, but for, it's for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. And from the beginning of time, throughout the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible proclaims that the hand of God's judgment falls upon those who commit wickedness. Amen. The hand of judgment falls upon those who commit wickedness. Uh, but here the Lord is declaring both to Solomon and to his people, hallelujah, that the hand of God, yes Lord, the judgment of God can be stopped. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and he gave a recipe for restoration. He gave us these four steps, hallelujah, on how we can be saved, how we can be delivered, how we can be restored. Hallelujah. He tells us step number one, they must confess um, the Lord, yes, Lord, be his people. I mean, verse 14, he, he is the only living and true God, the only Savior of the world, the only Savior of the universe. Number two, uh, they must humble themselves and pray before God, hallelujah, uh, instead of rebelling against him. Uh, instead of doing what we desire, everything we're big enough and bad enough to do, hallelujah, he's telling us to humble ourselves, hallelujah. Number three, he's telling us that we must pray and seek his face. Uh, to surrender to his will, uh, to receive forgiveness for our sins. And then number four, and today this is our focus and the foundation of what we're talking about today. He says they must repent, turn from their sinful behavior, uh, and turn back to God. In other words, if we turn from our wicked ways, he promises that we will hear from heaven. Yes, that, that he will forgive our sins and he will heal the land. Yes, Lord, he's telling us as essential that it's necessary for us to repent to turn from uh, our wicked ways, from our sinful behavior. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. He's telling us of the essential component for us to receive the healing that he has promised. Hallelujah. And somebody understands that repentance is necessary. Uh, it's necessary to receive God's forgiveness. It's necessary to receive God's salvation. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that uh, I serve a God who hears. Amen. 
uh, we serve a God that hears. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 15 and 16, put it this way, amen. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but as in all points, tempted as we are, but yet without sins. Uh, it says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Amen. And I don't know if there's ever a time that we needed to hear from heaven like I, like we need it right now. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I got a God that hears. Amen. I, I'm glad that God hears us when we cry. I, I'm glad that he's not a God that got ears and can't hear. Amen. He's not a God that has hands and can't pick me up when I fall down. He's not a God that has eyes and can't see me. God is a God that hears when we call. As a matter of fact, you don't have to take my word for it. Hallelujah. Blind Bar Mills was here. Uh, he lets you know that God is a God that hears. Uh, some of you understand this testimony, which is found in Mark chapter 10, that God is a God that hears. Yes, Lord, because he was on the road one day, but he heard that Jesus was passing by. Yes. And as much as they tried to keep him quiet, as much as they said, you know what, you, Jesus, don't disturb him, hallelujah. He said, you know what, I need God to come by my house. I, I need him to heal my situation. I need him to speak uh, to my situation. I don't know about you, but I'm glad today. Oh, that I have a God that hears. You don't have to take my word for it. You can talk as the ten lepers. Uh, their testimony is found in Luke chapter 17. Yes, Lord. When uh, Jesus was passing by, uh, uh, they knew what to say. They cried out to God. God. He said, Lord, yeah. Jesus, uh, have mercy on us. And because they cried out, yes, Lord, somebody knows you need to say the right thing at the right time. Uh, God heard their cry. Because they cried out, he called him Lord and Master. Yes, Lord. He heard their cry. He healed them from their dangerous situation. And there may be somebody that's listening to this uh, broadcast on this day. Amen. You don't have to go to Lion Bar Mayors. You may not know anything about the Ten Lepers, but you understand that you have called on the Lord. Yes, even in the midnight hour. Yes, Lord. When you gave more month than money. Yes, Lord. Uh, when the bills went up, uh, when the ends went deep, they weren't even waiting. Yes, Lord. The God that we serve, uh, he heard your cry. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. And again, if there was ever time that we need to hear from heaven, uh, if there's ever time that we need to hear from heaven, amen, the time is now. Uh, the time is now. We need to hear from heaven uh, in this time where tragedies are commonplace. All kind of diseases, people are slipping away. Yeah. Uh, economy's down. Uh, we can't get enough pay. But, but because we have a God and we put our trust in a God that hears, uh, as for me, I don't think I'm the only one. Yes, Lord. All I can say is thank you, Lord, uh, for all. You've done for me. Uh, does anybody know that God still hears? Yeah, we, we serve a God that hears. Yes, Lord. And if you cry out to him, he will hear. He will answer. He will re de deliver. He will renew, restore, and revive. But can I just throw this in for free? Uh, uh, I, want to let you understand, I want you to understand when you sang in 2 Chronicles 7, hallelujah, that, this, uh, that when we cry out, that this promise that he made to Solomon, that's applicable to each and every one of us. This promise is conditional. Somebody shout conditional. conditional. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, there is a prerequisite to hearing from God. Amen. There's a prerequisite uh, that God has put on there. There's a condition to this promise. Yes, Lord. And that condition is repentance. Somebody shout repentance. Yeah, I know that's a bad word in 2020. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I know we don't like to hear that too much, hallelujah, but, but I want to let you know today that repentance is necessary. God is challenging us. He's charging us to turn from our wicked ways. And, and some of you understand the, uh, the definition of repentance, amen? It's a changing of mind as well as a reversal of action. Let me say that again. It's a changing of mind yeah. as well as a reversal of action. It's, it's, it's a thorough turning away from your ways uh, uh, to God's ways. Hallelujah. It's recognizing that God is the most important person in our lives. Amen. To surrender just like Paul did in Acts chapter 9 and say, not my will. Not my will. Yes, but thy will be done. Does anybody know that turning is necessary? Amen. And, and there are times that uh, uh, God will remove certain things from us, uh, but there are also times that we got to put it away. Yeah. Somebody shall put it away. Amen. Uh, God has called us to put away evil. It's, De it's in Deuteronomy 22 and 21 in your Bible. Amen. He said, you shall, uh, so you shall put away the evil from among you. Hallelujah. You have to put it away. You have to turn from it. You have to be proactive. You have to take the action that's necessary to put 
a wasting. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, Paul put it this way. Uh, he said, you know what? Now that we have such a great cloud of witnesses, let us uh, 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 turn from, uh, let us cast aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us that we can run this race with patience. Amen. Uh, uh, certain things you got to put away. Amen. Yeah. You got to cast it aside. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to let you know today that turning is necessary. It's a dangerous and costly mistake to, uh, uh, to not take temptation, to not take sin seriously. Ooh, let me say that again. Uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's a dangerous and costly mistake not to take temptation and sin seriously. Hallelujah. It's a sad testimony of many that have succumbed to the sin's enticements and entanglements. Uh, 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 is, is that they thought that they were strong enough to remain strong even in the midst of temptation and resistance. Hallelujah. Uh, but God requires his people to remove it. Uh, yeah. He requires his people to turn from it. Amen. Yeah. To turn from evil in their midst. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, when wickedness surrounds you, hallelujah. When wickedness is presented to you, when wickedness is even residing within you, hallelujah, you are in danger of becoming uh, 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 anemic and anesthetized to its destructive potential. But God calls us to turn away. Somebody shall turn away from it. Hallelujah. You never assume that you are immune to temptation. Uh, never assume that uh, you are immune to sin and resultant wickedness. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, some people believe, you know what, everybody else sins. Uh, but, uh, but you believe that you, so you've got to the point in your life that you, some people are so self-righteous. Hallelujah. They don't believe they sin. But everybody sins. Hallelujah. And we should never assume that we are immune to temptation, sin, and resultant wickedness. Hallelujah. We don't even never need to underestimate uh, the craftiness yeah. of the devil. Yeah. Uh, do you understand that his John description as you is related in John 10 and 10? But uh, he said, you know, that he cometh but to kill, uh -huh. to steal, uh, and to destroy. Well, I like the be pause, but I am come, yeah, that you may have life, mm, yeah, and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We don't need to underestimate the enemy. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know today that God does not tolerate evil. Mm. God does not tolerate evil. Hallelujah. For evil causes the death of his son. Hallelujah. Uh, evil causes un un untold pain and destruction to everyone uh, that, that it touches. Hallelujah. Uh, and treating evil lightly shows foolish disregard for God's redemptive work. Hallelujah. And what God is calling us to do is have an honest evaluation of our lives. Hallelujah. Uh, and when he reveals temptation to us, hallelujah, it's our charge uh, that we should remove it. Yes, that we should turn away from it. Hallelujah. When God convicts you of the evil in your midst, you must remove it immediately. Hallelujah. Uh, in other words, we got to turn from it. Does anybody know turning is necessary? Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you ought to shout it again. Turn from it. Uh, there are many times, however, that you may feel powerless. Uh, to remove ungodly influences. Uh, uh, you may feel powerless. Uh, you may go to a job. Yes, Lord. Uh, or you go throughout this world where people are being as evil and as mean as they can be. Has anybody knows that the, the nicer you get, uh, uh, the worse some folk act? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And there are times that you, uh, that you feel powerless to remove ungodly influence. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then when you can't remove ungodly influences, it's the job uh, for you to turn from. You must remove yourself from the temptation. Don't take my word for it. Paul put it this way in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. Yes, Lord. He urged us to avoid every kind of evil. Uh, don't take my word for it. Ask Joseph. His testimony is in Genesis 39 and 12. Yes, Lord. When, when he was seduced uh, by Lady Potiphar, hallelujah, he didn't mind pulling off his coat. Yeah, he didn't mind leaving some stuff behind. Yes, Lord. So that he can flee and maintain his righteous position with God. And let me just say this. Amen. There are some folks that you may have to turn away from. Uh, there may be some folks in some settings that you may have to turn away from. Hallelujah. But I don't, I don't want anything standing between my soul and my Savior. Somebody shall turn from it. Amen. Turn from it. Yes, Lord. God is calling us uh, to turn. Uh, turn. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, in order for us to hear from heaven. In order for us to receive the forgiveness. In order for us to receive the restoration. Uh -huh. God is challenging us to, to not miss this step. Not miss this prerequisite. Now, miss this step in this uh, in this promise that we must turn from our wicked ways. Uh, we don't need to lose our disgust for sin. Uh, we need to make sure that we're turning from it. Amen. 
I believe you guys. When we turn from it, God has promised that he will hear. Does anybody know there are promises for the repentant? Amen. God has promised us that he will hear from those who repent. Uh, Proverbs 28, 13 puts it this way. He who covers his sin uh, will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them, uh, shed he, them, he uh, will have mercy. Yes, Lord. Isaiah 55 and 7 put it this way. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his cause, uh, and let him turn to the Lord, and he yeah. will have mercy yeah, on him, and, the, and, and to our God, and he will abundantly part. Yes, Lord. He will abundantly part. That means he'll set you free. Yes, Lord. That thing that's been holding you down. Yes, Lord. God will set you free. Yes, that thing that's been keeping you down. God will set you free. Hallelujah. But you have a responsibility. Yes, Lord. As we're uh, seeking his face, we must turn from our wicked ways. Yes, Lord. Uh, turning and hearing. And as we turn, yes, Lord, he's promised that he will hear from him. He will forgive our sins. And he will heal the land. But well, that brings me to my text today, hallelujah. Because uh, if there was ever an illustration of how conditional this promise is, if there was ever an illustration that, that broke it down uh, even so that a child could understand, it is in our text today in this 23rd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Uh, I want to introduce the psalm and, and present to others this tale of two thieves, yes, Lord, uh, where God is showing to us, hallelujah, that as we turn, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my first and turn, that's the word, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Yeah. Uh, he promised that he would forgive the sin and, and that he would heal, yeah, he would heal the land. In this 23rd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, this is Jesus hanging, Jesus hanging on the cross. Uh, the scene is the scene of Jesus' crucifixion. And in this crucifixion scene, uh, uh, when he's saying his seven last things from the cross, hallelujah, he's now having a crucial conversation with the criminals that are being crucified with him. And not only the criminals, but even with the crowd, hallelujah. And what we see in this crucial conversation between the criminals, uh, between the malefactors, between the thieves uh, uh, that are hanging beside him, what he uses and how he sets up this situation, he compares and contrast uh, those that receive uh, God's conditional promise and those that reject God's conditional promise. Amen. Let me say that again. He compares and contrasts the difference between those that will receive the conditional promise of God and those that will reject the conditional promise of God. Amen. Can we go deeper today? Yeah. I feel like clocking in. Can I go to work yeah. today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Uh, as we go through this text in this uh, 23rd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, uh, the first thing I want to point up from the text today is a deserved death. Mm. Amen. A deserved death. Hallelujah. I'm in verses 39 and 41. And the Bible says, And one of the malefactors, one of the criminals, one of the thieves, uh, uh, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If hmm, thou be the Christ, yeah. save thyself, and us, and then verse 41 picks it up and says, you know what, we have justly indeed, this is the other one speaking, our, uh, just uh, received the reward due for our sins, but this man has done nothing amiss. Amen. He's talking about a deserved death. Amen. He's talking about these male factors. He's talking about criminals. Somebody shout criminals. Uh, uh, these are not members of the deacon board. Uh, these are not members of the trustee board. Hope that all this, hallelujah, amen. Uh, these are people that are professional thieves. Yeah. Uh, people that uh, believe in stealing stuff. Uh, taking things that do not belong to them. And as a consequence, hallelujah, uh, of, of their sin, uh, uh, their wicked ways, yes, Lord, they have been given the death sentence. They have been sentenced to die. Yes, Lord. Uh, a deserved death. Yeah. You, in other words, these men are not innocent. Yeah. They're not innocent. No, yeah. no. Uh, uh, they have had a long historic career of stealing stuff. And as a consequence, they're being hanged right there with Jesus. They're being crucified. Hallelujah. They deserve the death. Uh, uh, Johnny Cochran couldn't get them off. <laughs> uh, 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 the, the lawyer of your choice could not get them off. Yes, Lord. They deserve Death, yes, Lord, God, my Bible tells me in Romans uh, 3 and 23, yes, Lord, uh, 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 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, not only these criminals, amen, but each and every one of us, we have, we all deserve death. Yeah. Uh, 
ever since Adam sinned in the garden, death has been our destiny. Amen. How we all have sinned uh, uh, and, and fallen short of, this, of the glory of God. But I'm glad Paul didn't leave us right there because he yeah. said in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. Yes, it's a deserved death. Yeah, but, but the gift of God, yeah, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, Lord. We deserve death. But I don't know about you, but I thank God for Jesus. Amen. I thank God for the gift of salvation. I, I thank God. And guess what? That he hung, he bled, and he died. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Yes, Lord. I deserve death. Hallelujah. But point number two, I want to talk about is the danger of disbelief. Uh, because these malefactors, these criminals, they deserve death. But uh, I want to talk about the danger of disbelief. Uh, I'm in verse 39, the fee clause, uh, uh, the danger of de disbelief. Because one of them, uh, the one, one criminal, hallelujah, he said, If thou be the Christ, uh, save thyself. And while you're at it, why don't you go and hook your boy? Why don't you say to us? <laughs> hallelujah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And he said, If thou be the Christ. In other words, he was not convinced uh, that Jesus was who he said he was. Uh, uh, I don't know if he didn't see him uh, give sight to the wine. I don't know if he didn't see Jesus cleanse a leprosy. I don't know if he didn't see Jesus speak Lazarus out of the grave. Hallelujah. But but this brother right here, he had a, a disbelief. He had in his statement, he had what we call an if statement. Some of you are familiar with that. He, he was suffering from the danger of disbelief. He said, if that will be the Christ. Why don't you get down and save yourself? Uh, if you are who you say you are. Uh, and why are you at it? Uh, why don't you not only save yourself, but save us? Uh, in other words, he was unrepentant until the end. Yeah. Does anybody know there's danger in disbelief? Uh, uh, does anybody know that there's danger in after all that we've seen? You would think in, in this moment right here when he's already been given the death sentence, in this moment right here when he's sitting in the electric chair, so to speak, uh, you would think everybody, when they get back to die, would get nice. Amen. Each and every one of us get nice. And Lord, and guess what? Even people have been hateful all their lives. Uh, when they've been given the death sentence, you know what? Uh, uh, they start trying to sneak their way into heaven some kind of way. But this brother right here, he was unrepentant mm, until the end. Uh, uh, he was suffering from the danger of disbelief. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. He's the perfect picture of hardness until the end. Uh, hanging there. Yes, Lord. In the midst of everything else. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, he had a hardness of heart. And even in the midst of that, he started talking bad to Jesus. He said, why, if you are who you say you are, uh, uh, if you are the son of Christ, why don't you come down on and, and save yourself? Uh, and eat while you're at it, uh, save us. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, I get amazed by people, uh, the actions of, of the unrepentant. Huh. Let me say that again. I am so amazed, yeah. uh, Sister Lane, by the actions of the unrepentant. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, people that can see all the circumstances yeah. that we see in 2020, see all the circumstances, uh, and, and still in the midst of everything that we see, they're still unrepentant. Amen. And, and, and now he has the audacity to ask Jesus a question. Uh, uh, and, and because, you know, some of you have heard somewhere along the way that Jesus is on the main line. Uh, you can call him up and tell him what you want. Uh, and that song has some truth, but then it has some flaws in it too. Because believe it or not, the, the calling up, it, it's, that's just for people that are in relationship with him. Somebody shout relationship. Uh, you got to be in relationship with God. Hallelujah. Uh, there's times when there's some conversation that's going on, but, but believe it or not, God is not listening. Amen. Uh, God is not listening. Have, have you been through a season when God seems silent? Yes, Lord. When God seems to be ignoring requests? Yes, Lord. This brother said, why don't you come down and save yourself? And, and while you're at it, uh, uh, save us. Uh, there are times when God seems silent. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of couples that come to couples counseling sometimes. Yes, Lord. There's a lot of conversation going on, uh, but ain't nobody listening. Lord have mercy. Uh, they're ignoring all the requests. Come down and save yourself and save us. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, there are times that my life 
like that God sings silent. Have you been there before? Now, one thing that we know that sin separates us. Hallelujah. Sin separates us. Uh, there's danger in disbelief. When we don't believe the promises of God, when we don't believe that what you sow, that shall you reap. If we don't believe that we, if we give, it shall be given unto us. When we don't believe that God forgives us the way that we forgive others. Hallelujah. There's a danger in disbelief. And sin separates us from the presence of God. Sin separates us from the power of God. And if you want God to hear your prayers, hallelujah, uh, 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 you need to make sure that we're turning from our wicked ways. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are times when God seems silent. Uh, and not only in, in this brother's life, not only in uh, couples counseling, but also, do you remember the time that the, the disciples were in the storm? Y'all remember that, don't you? Uh, uh, Jesus had told them to get in a boat and go over to the other side. And in the midst of that situation, yes, Lord, uh, uh, when Jesus was there on the boat with them, there was a storm that arose. Uh, and the Bible said that Jesus was asleep on the pillow. In other words, he was good to sleep. Yeah, he was doing like some of y'all used to do when we used to be at the church. Yes, Lord. Yeah, he was a good at sleep. He, he was asleep on the pillow and, and the storm was raging. Uh, and they said, somebody go get Jesus. Uh, and somebody said, wake up Jesus. Uh, uh, we in a storm right now. We need our Savior to come. And Jesus woke up and spoke peace to the storm. Yes, Lord. And, and sometimes God will allow storms to arise in our lives. He'll allow certain things uh, to go through it. And when he's doing that, guess what? Some of you remember the other sermon in the series. It's usually for a reason. It's usually for inspection, for correction, or direction. Hallelujah. And what I believe that God is doing right now, guess what? He, he's allowing us to do a self-examination. Yeah. He's allowing us to grade our own paper. Yes, Lord. To see if there's any sin oh, that we need to repent from. Amen. It is sin that we can repent from because there's danger in disbelief. Hallelujah. But he who covers his sin, Proverbs 28, 13, uh, will not prosper. But he who confesses sin and forsakes them will have mercy. And I don't know about you, but I believe somebody needs the mercy of God today. Amen. Uh, we need to experience the mercy of God. So number one, uh, a deserved death. Uh, these were malefactors. Uh, they were criminals, yes, Lord, and they deserved that. Just like you and I all have sinned yeah. and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, uh, we all deserve that. Uh, number two, there is a danger in disbelief. Yeah. This promise is conditional. Yes, Lord, some promises are unconditional, but this one is conditional. Yes, Lord, uh, you will receive this promise of healing and hearing if you do the conditions that set forth. Uh, so the danger of disbelief. And then number three. Is I get ready to take my seat. Yes, Lord. The desire for deliverance. Yes, Lord. Uh, I feel like doing it today. Yeah. The, the desire for deliverance. Yes, Lord. Although there was one brother who was hard to the end. My Bible tells me in verses 40 through 43, but the other answer. Yes, Lord. In other words, that's comparing and contrasting. Yes, Lord. One brother was rejecting the promises of God. One brother was denying uh, the power of God, uh, but the other one was receiving the promise of God. Uh, but one of them, yeah, the, the other one answered, verse 40, and rebuked him, saying, Does not thou not fear God, uh, seeing that we are in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly for the, uh, receive what, what was due, our due reward of our deeds? Uh, but this man right here, yeah, uh, I don't know much about him, but this man right here, yeah, has done nothing wrong. Uh, I don't know this thing right here, but I have to agree with him. Yes, Lord. I, I've, served, I've, I've, I've tried it, and I find there, just like Colin, no fault in him. Uh, and what I like about this brother right here in verse number 42, he said, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, yeah, remember me uh, uh, when I come into thy kingdom. Uh, in other words, there was a desire for deliverance. Amen. He wanted something different. I, I'm just wondering today, does anybody want something different? Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I look back over this COVID-19 season. Yes, Lord. And I believe that some of us have delighted in some of the changes brought on in this season. Yes, Lord. Some of us were super excited about not having to commute uh, to work. Amen. Some of us were super delighted for the ability to work from home, uh, even in our PJs. Hallelujah. Uh, some of us were excited about having fewer appointments and errors and, and not having to go over to here and there and the other place. Uh, but I want to let you know today that, that even though we may have enjoyed that, hallelujah, I believe somebody
somebody wants a desire for deliverance. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have a desire for something different. Uh, who am I talking to today? Does anybody have a desire for deliverance? Uh, does anybody have a desire for something different? Amen. Because when I look at this COVID-19 season, and, and now that this thing has, the pain has become personal. Uh, when I have faces that I can relate to, people that I love, yes Lord, people that I cherish, yes Lord, that this thing has impacted, uh, either infected or impacted, then yes Lord, uh, I have a desire, yeah, for deliverance. I have a desire for something different. Uh, uh, when I see people suffering, yes, Lord, when jobs are going out and they don't know where the income is coming from, and, and there are certain people that believe that $600 a week is too much money for them, amen. I don't know about you, but I have a desire uh, for something different. Uh, uh, when I'm praying, and other, like other parents, yes, Lord, do we send our kids to school or, uh, and take chances on them, or do we try to learn how to be a teacher uh, in our own house? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I have a desire uh, for something different. Uh, and when I think about just the forsaking not the assembly of church, uh, I miss church, amen. I miss preaching to people instead of you, amen. I miss getting my holy hug. Uh, I miss having some holler back. Preach, Pastor. Uh, I miss holler. I'm doing the best I can. I don't know about you, but I have a desire there for something different. Hallelujah. But I will let you know today that, that God has promised us. He said, you know what? That if my people, yeah, I feel like doing it today, uh, who are called by my name. Because I have a desire. 
They called him and desired for deliverance. Yeah. Uh, he cried out, Lord, just remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that's what God wants us to do today. He's letting us know today. As we compare and contrast the lives of these two brothers right here. Hallelujah. He's letting us know that he has a conditional promise for us. When we find ourselves in the midst of pain, problems, and pressures. When we find ourselves in, in this pandemic. Hallelujah. The word of God promised that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not just my hymn, seek my face. And here it is today. And turn her, yeah, from their wicked ways. Then when I hear from them, I will forgive their sin. I will heal the land. And the question to the center is, while we're in the midst of this storm, while we're in the midst of the situation that God has allowed certain things to come in our midst, uh, when this COVID-19 season has attacked us, hallelujah, infected some and impacted others, the question to consider is, why has God allowed this to happen? Is it for inspection? Is it for correction? Or is it for direction? Whatever the reason is, hallelujah, the challenge and charge for us today is to Hallelujah. To do just what God has said right here. Take some time to do a see and check, as Minister Simon would say. And if there's anything that does not look like God, be intentional. Take the initiative and turn from that wicked way. And I know, I know, I know some of you have said, well, preach out there. I've been trying to turn from this situation for as long as I remember. But believe it or not, there are certain things that and most things that you can't come out of yourself. Hallelujah. You need a Savior. You need the power of the Holy Spirit operating inside of you. And what I learned about the Lord is that if you turn it over to Him, if you turn your life over to Him, if you surrender to His Word, yes, Lord. If you surrender to receive Him as personal Savior, yes, Lord. That death that we deserve, yes, Lord. Jesus died for all of us. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. If you're here today, don't suffer from the danger of disbelief. Hallelujah. He is the Son of God. Because not only did he come to the earth, he hung, bled, and died. Was buried in Joseph's new temple. Uh, but as the old preacher was shouted early, yeah. Sunday morning. He got up with all power. Yeah. yeah, in his hand. He didn't stay here. He paid the death penalty that we all deserve. Yes, Lord. And because of that, if we believe it in him, that whenever death meets our, our destination, when death comes, hallelujah, if you have a desire for deliverance, I'll, I'll just listen to this last point. Amen. He can get a, a detour you to your destination. Hallelujah. He told this brother, today, you will be with me in paradise. Yes, Lord. A destination detour. Yes, Lord. You were called to go to hell. Yes, Lord, all of us. Yeah. Uh, but God died. Jesus died for us. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Be in paradise. Yes, Lord. Paradise. Yes, Lord. We don't talk about it much these days because we've, we've got so comfortable with our own houses and all the other things yeah, that we've accumulated. But believe it or not, there's nothing on this side of the tree that can compare to what God has in store for us on the other side. Job put it this way, over there where the wind shall cease from trouble, and the weary shall be at rest. Do you want to take a detour to your destination? Because right now our destination is hell. Just like that thief. Uh, we deserve death. Hallelujah. Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. So don't suffer from the end of your disbelief. Have a desire for deliverance today. And if you do, you man, you can have your destination detour. You can go to heaven when you die. Because death meets us all. Paul put it this way, and I'm opposing now. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1. But we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were is all, that we have a building, a house not made with hands, that's eternal with heaven. Paul talked about the death of the saints, but he talked about the destination of the soul. Is your destination even detour today? Hallelujah. And if you're destined and you're going to heaven, well, yes, Lord, you definitely. And with everything that we've seen in this season, why don't you do what this 
love it, Brother Dean. He didn't suffer from a negative of disbelief. He just cried out to the Lord. Savior, when you go into your kingdom, please remember me. And he'll do it. The Savior, you renew you, you revive you, you restore you. And if you're hearing this message today, hallelujah, and you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, we want to let you know you can be saved today. But just like that thing, it's not about how many things you have done wrong in your life. As long as you can do the right thing, one thing right in your life. And that's your ABCs. Except believe and confess. Except the fact you're born to sin and believe that Jesus is the Son of God that died for this sin. Will you make that confession in your mouth? He'll give you a brand new life, new life abundantly. Yeah. He can come the joy and the, the strength of your life. He can remove all pain and misery from his life. Why don't you receive the gift of salvation today? We're going to offer you a set of prayer. And if you want to receive that gift this morning, you don't have to wait until you're in your electric chair or on the cross on your deathbed. You can begin a life of him now. Hallelujah. Let's receive Jesus. Let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I accept the fact that I was born a sinner. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. And now I make that confession of my life. Cleanse me now. Save me now. Heal me now. I receive it now. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. If you, if you pray that simple prayer, amen, why don't you give God some praise today? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Get into a good Bible. Believe in church. Yes, Lord. And uh, be taught the word of God and give it a better understanding of, of what it means to be a child of God. Hallelujah. And if you receive that prayer, you need a church on Hallelujah. You can email us here at the Road Church. It's info at stevenroadchurch.org. Hallelujah. And we're going to love on you. We're teaching the word of God. Hallelujah. And we'll tell you more about this new life that you've begun today. We thank God for you. We bring his blessings upon each and every one of you. And as we close out today, I want to command and bless you. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Let's rule and abide with us all henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. May God bless you. May he live well with you. Is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Yes. It's all right if you worship. Come on. Yes. Yes, Lord. God is now. Yes, Lord. What a mighty God I serve.